If you have been in the environment side of Blender for a while, you probably heard about an amazing Blender add-on called GeoScatter. GeoScatter, originally called Scatter, is a distribution add-on made for scattering of plants, trees, rocks, and other vegetation and nature assets easier in Blender. But if you have looked at the Blender market page, you probably know that it isn't cheap. But in this video, we're going to take a look at a 100% free alternative to GScatter, which is GScatter made by Grasswell 3 d which has a lot of features to be looked at. So I'm going to break this video up into three separate parts. First off, I'll show you how to download and install the add-on, and then I'm going to be showing you how to use it along with this vast majority of features. So without further talking, let's get into it. So the first link in the video description will be the official GScatter website page and to download it you need to make an account on this website. Now it's totally free um, so just log in right here. So now the second link in the video description will be the download page for the GScatter. Now you can totally download the most recent version but the layout is kind of different and I'm used to the old layout. So I'm going to download GScatter version 0.9.2, so just click on it and it will download it. So inside of Blender, let's go to Edit, Preferences, then Add-ons, and we're going to install the add-on right here, then select your zip right here, and click on Install Add-on. Now it should automatically search for GScatter, but I already have it installed, so the only thing left to do is hit this check mark right here and you should have it installed and after that click on save preferences if you want it to be enabled every single time you restart blender or make a new project now let me exit out of the user preferences press a and delete everything by pressing x so now let's press n and then go to gscatter and we have this emitter so basically this is going to be our ground plane so let's press shift a add in a plane scale it by about five times the original size and then now we can select the eyedropper tool and click on the plane you can also select it from this menu right here so now to start scattering some objects we need to click on the library right here and this will open the library for the g scatter add-on you can also import some custom assets right here so now to select an asset let's click on this one right here and by default it will have the settings but if you're scattering a lot of assets you better turn this down to low or proxy right here on this one and or medium but i recommend low for like a very dense forest now you can add to scene which will add a object to the scene or you can scatter selected so that's what i'm going to do so just click on scatter selected and wait a little bit and then press OK. Now by default you'll see these rock looking objects and it's just GScatter's way of saving up memory in the viewport. So if you want to see the actual asset, click on this button right here and it will show the actual asset right here. So now let's start changing some settings. So the first thing that I'm going to do is pump up the density to around 60. This is going to make a very dense amount of grass. Now if you want to optimize your viewport display a little bit more, you can change this viewport display value. Um, so it just renders a little bit of objects, but in the full render, it will render all of the objects. Now let's go from distribution to scale. And this is basically the object scale, so we can make this a little bit bigger. We have the main right here, and we can make these a little bit smaller, but I'm just going to make this Maybe like it to just to be a little bit higher. So there you go. You also have a seed for randomization. I'm going to set this to zero. I like the default one. Now let's go to rotation. And this is basically the rotation of the objects. So we can customize this by pressing shift. Just so we can make our movements more sensitive. And there you go. Just add some random rotation. Again, you can use the seed value right here. And you also have a few other things. And the geometry which will select the instance. So it basically is bringing in a collection which is this one right here. The cool thing is, is that it hides on the viewport so you can't see it right here. It just makes things a little bit more clean and makes things much easier. 
Okay, so now we're going to talk about the add effect layer stuff. So if we select one of these, the first thing that we're going to cover is the Musgrave texture. Now, just like in the shader editor and stuff like that, the Musgrave texture is just going to um, scatter on it. So it's just going to affect the distribution. So we have the scale right here. And maybe do something like that. Maybe like a river and stuff like that. I don't know. Um, but yeah. Make it scale. Also a seed value. So that's pretty cool. Next up, we can cover the wave right here. Now the wave is just as you think. Maybe just, just, just a little bit of this. Um, but this will basically add a wave effect to this. Maybe if I pump up the density a little bit less. I don't know. You can really not see it. But yeah, that's it. Now real quick everyone, I forgot to mention the weight mask. So if we add one of these, um, we do need to subdivide our plane. So let's go into edit mode, subdivide it 80 times, then add a group, just uh, make some random stuff. And then if we add it right here, you can see we get our distribution so that's pretty cool to make maybe like some custom shapes or paths or stuff like that so that's pretty cool now the next one will require a bit of geometry so i'm just going to add a little bit of subdivisions to this maybe like 80 and proportional editing it's a little bit like that there you go shit smooth Okay, now we can add another effect, and this will be the height effect. Now you can um, change this curve right here to basically tell where it should distribute more. Feel like kind of like this. There you go. I don't know, just have a little peak right there. Looks nice. Then the final effect that I'm going to cover is if we press shift A, add an A random object. Of course, I'm going to add the Suzanne monkey head right there on the top. <laughs> uh, if we add an effect, choose proxy, then select our Suzanne monkey head. And if we select the distance, as you can see, G scatter is limiting the objects closer to... Um, the monkey head so if we also apply a little bit of this curve you can see we can specify how much we want maybe if I do something like this you can see we can get a little bit closer right there and there you go I forgot to mention one more thing is that if we add an effect proxy select our object um, Increase distance and do all this stuff. Um, there you go. You can actually move the object. And as you can see, the grass will still make sure it doesn't clip to your object. So that's super cool. So now to finalize the video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a scene of grass now we already added the grass so we're going to be adding some more assets like dead leaves make sure these are all set to low and click on scatter selected just add a few more this one right here scatter selected maybe finally we're going to add this one scatter selected and there you go. Now we can uh, scale the size. And make sure to enable all of these so you can see what you're doing. It gets a little bit bigger. And maybe we'll do something like this for the camera. So shift A, add in a camera, control Alt, numpad 0. And just double tap C just to move them little bit further away now we can add a um a focus point 
by adding an empty, putting it right here. Then we'll uh, select the camera, and we'll add a depth of field, select the empty, and then if we go to material preview, you can see we have this boundary right here. Change the f stop. Uh, maybe actually, you know, move the empty a little bit closer. Try to select your camera and making just like something like this. Yeah, it's nice. Um, now let me add in an HDRI right here, here, then we're going to open up an HDRI. As always, I'm going to link Polyhaven's HDRIs in the video description, and I'm going to select this one right here. I'm going to be using Cycles, so switch from EV to Cycles, I already put in my settings, and also to put a boundary on your camera, click Alt-B. Z and rendered view so you can see how your scene is looking I'm gonna actually change this to EV just to preview how the HDRI looks in the background it looks okay I think yeah only thing left to do now is render this image so let's go ahead and click control us to uh, save our project and let's render this out so hit F12 to render. And there you go. As you can see, we have this nice looking render right there. Now you can further composite this. So um, I'm going to do that real quick and I'll show you the final result. So here's the final image that I got. Now let me just save this by pressing Alt S or going right here to image and save. But that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something new, Drop it in the comments and download this amazing free add-on, which I'll link in the video description. Follow me on Twitter, which I'm getting so close to 100 followers, so thank you so much. And also consider supporting this channel on Patreon, the links are in the description. Thank you for watching, hope you learned something new, and happy rendering.